So I'm talking about this right now. Every every sheep needs a shepherd. Yes. No matter what the call and the gift in the local church is important and is valuable and is necessary. Yeah, you need revelation. Impartation in your life. It's a blessing from the Lord. If nothing else, we need accountability. We all need accountability. Yeah. We all have a big, big room in our house called improvement. That we all can be better and stronger and wiser. More sensitive to the Lord, more dedicated, more faithful, more loyal to the Lord, to one another, to our relationships. And all that, sometimes you have to fight. You have to war. It doesn't come easy. You have to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and what? He'll flee from you. Yes. So we must be willing to put in time, effort, diligence, and uh, know that God has our interests at heart. And surely in blessing, he's promised to bless us, and in multiplying, he promised to what? To multiply us. Because mm -hmm. God is faithful. It's the faithfulness of God. Even in battle, he's faithful. Even in your struggles and your challenges, God is faithful. Yes. Yeah. Full of faith. And uh, we can fill ourselves up with the word of God, therefore causing us to be faithful, faith-filled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it costs us something. And you must be willing to pay the price to see certain victories wrought in your life. Things that you would conquer and that you would overcome. And see victory in your life. In your marriage, in your finances. And yeah, sometimes, you know, people talk about, well, just stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. That's not for every occasion. Yeah, because he's armed us as soldiers and warriors. And we can attack the enemy with offensive weapons and then also defensive. Yes. Every battle is not an offensive battle. Some battles are defensive. But you're standing and maintaining your ground. Because I know people that in warfare, all they know is fight, 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 war, 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 intercede, intercede, intercede. And they become battle-weary soldiers. Becomes very taxing, even in the natural, where our military is concerned. You can't deploy them back to back over and over again. Real war is hell. Yes. Are pretty close to it. It's ugly, it's nasty, it's brutal. And even the stuff that they show us on television, that's still not war. That's not that's that's not the front lines of war. That's not the bloodiness, missing limbs, roadside bomb war. Even if it was illegal drug wars, they still don't show us everything. It's too graphic. Most people couldn't take it. And it depends on the motive for war. People begin to cry, well, why are we even there? Why are these lives being lost and taken? Motive for war is important. And you need to have an objective. You need to have a battle plan, yes. a blueprint for war, or for ministry, for your life, and what God called you to do. You can't just, just go step out running because you hear noise outside your house and your window. That's right. You, first of all, you don't know what's out there or who's out there. You don't know what kind of offensive weapons they have. Or you don't know what their defense is like. I know, for example, you still have, you know, men that's not going to keep your body in shape, but they still think folk fighting, fist fighting. They get all buffed, looking like Hercules, and run outside to a 357 Magnum right in their eyeballs. Well, 
What you gonna do now, big man? Your fist is no match for that 357 that's pointed right in your eyeball. And they say move if you want to. But we need divine strategy from God. Meaning, we need to lay some groundwork with prayer and with intercession and banding together as a team, unified and on one accord. Everybody has the same mindset, the same directives. Hmm? We understand our assignment at the part that we play on the team. Because you are important to the success. Sometimes whether your fellow army mate, military mate, lives or dies, and understanding that your next move could be your last one. That's right. So you always have to think methodically strategically and in wisdom, not out of your emotions. You can never go to war to fight out of emotions because you're mad, because you're angry and you want to get revenge. Calm yourself down. Yes. That the peace of God can rule in your heart. That you can hear God clear when he gives you strategy. Divine instruction. Say that. Divine instruction. Divine instruction. Mm -hmm. And you must renew your mind in the word of God. Because no matter how physical, physically competent you are, psychologically you must be strong in your will, in your resolve, in your emotions to see God bring the past the thing that he's promised. Yes. That you will have to experience the agony of defeat. Because if you continue to experience the agony of defeat, the agony of defeat, the agony of defeat, it begins to play on your self-esteem and your confidence. To where people begin to doubt the faithfulness of God in battle. Because there will always be casualties of war. Yes. In any kind of battle, there's casualties. There's just where people lose their minds. Mm -hmm. Even in Christendom. Because of lack of wisdom and understanding and just common sense. I'm teaching better than you saying amen. Not taking care of their bodies. Not giving their bodies proper rest. Not feeding their faith on the word of God. Not taking some time out. Oh, I know what it's like to be warned. I pray that the interceded for people that didn't have any intentions to change. Mm -hmm. And I place myself in the gap for them. Yeah. And come to find out they just living for the devil as bold as they want to. So you gotta count the cost. Mm -hmm. You need some details before, you know, you get to talk about agreeing with folk and intercede and pray. Well, what are we praying about? What are we agreeing on? Yes, what part are you going to play in this? Mm -hmm. You're not going to just sit on the sideline while I'm fighting your war. Okay. Amen. That's how a lot of leaders get out of here prematurely. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to defend the sheep and feed the sheep and nurture the sheep. But the sheep has to, you know, uh, pay attention to the shepherd, listen, give heed. Because if not, the wolf is waiting yes, yes. to devour. Yes. 
So you can't just go to battle without a battle plan. And some people are only willing to fight for so long and so far. You never know how long a battle will last, how long, you know, you could be going through something. Mm -hmm. That's right. Even if it's your wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. You don't know how long it's going to last. That's why you got to have spiritual stamina and endurance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't sell microwaves over here. We sell crock pots. Thank you. Slow roast and simmering. Make sure people have a good foundation. Because now you got folk, they, they, they quit traps. They just fly by nights and, you know, they, they, have, they have no real fight. They have no experience in God. They're novices. Mm -hmm. They have no seasoning. You know, bland food. <laughs> Somebody wants it. But a real experienced fighter that got no how you can just walk up on him. You can just heal about him. Muhammad Ali in his day, y'all want to go fight the chair. Okay, go ahead. Now we're not talking about that rocky stuff now, Apollo. We ain't talking about that. That's tips. That's just movie effects and stuff. I mean, real fighting. Real fight. Real war. Where you must be all in. Say all in. All, all in. in. To know that it could be a fight to the death. Yeah. Through the attack of the enemy. I told people, you know, God forbid that I ever got cancer or whatever it is. I said, I will fight it to the end. Some more unconventional. Mm -hmm. But I said, well, would you want... Chemo, I said, no. I want poison in my body. Because God created the body to naturally heal itself. That means I've been sinning against my own body, knowingly or unknowingly. Somebody say, well, Pastor, that might be pride. No, it's not. That's my choice and my decision. What needs to happen, I need to correct what I've been doing that's wrong. That's why a lot of people die. They leave. They eat crazy. They eat silly. And the enemy will use those things against people. It's temptation. That's all it is. I used to be addicted to sugar, sweets. I'm sure I got an honesty from my mom. Mm -hmm. But common sense kicked in. You know, things start happening in the health and the body. I think it's too because I said, oh, young man, you got that same addiction. Can anything sweet, anything. I would eat just sugar if I didn't have nothing sweet around. Y'all ever had sugar water? Why y'all look at me with a tone of voice? You ain't had no Kool-Aid, you ain't had nothing, no tea, but you want something sweet. Anyway, that might be too old for some of y'all. Don't you do it. Don't you do it, young people. Don't you do it. Stay out of that kitchen. That's around that sweet stuff. You know, when people will do those things, and then what? They'll start to blame the devil. Damn the devil? That's, he may be using that as a tool against you now. But there's something that's within that person. Every man is drawn what of his what? His own lust is what James says. Mm -hmm. it's, and that bait, it's bait because the enemy knows that's something that's attractive to you or else. So whatever yours is. Yeah. And he will begin to use those things against you. But you don't want to be opposing your own self. Being a hindrance to yourself. So if you know the things to do right for survival and success, as we continue to talk about the power of success of vision, and we're focusing more now on uh, through spiritual warfare, the power and success of vision through spiritual warfare, combat, hand-to-hand, face-to-face, 
breath to breath, eyeball to eyeball. Yeah. To when when you when you when the Roman soldier shook his dagger in the man, he just looking at him. Eyeball to eyeball. It ain't uh, no, it's eyeball to eyeball. Watching the life go out of the person. They were ruthless. They were assassins. Take mm-hmm. you out in a moment of time. Mm-hmm. They were in excellent physical condition. They were tacticians where war is concerned. You know. Like you have, you know, snipers. I don't, I don't, I don't remember now what the longest sniper shot is, but it's it's a mile, so it's out there to hit a target that far away. And they say it's down. Or they're down. Now they're using the, the drones to take folks out. So warfare evolves. And you have to be willing sometimes to make those adjustments and those changes. Depending on what you are, uh, what you are dealing with at that particular time. So sometimes you can't take the same weapons in the next battle. That's right. At least not in the initial engaging of the battle. Because it's not the same battle. That's what happens when people start to walk in familiarity. And don't understand that when the end, even with Jesus, left him and for a season for a more opportune time, he goes to re strategize, to refocus. Yeah. See? And in those moments, most believers and church folk and saints, they just sit around like, okay, well, I'll just wait till you get here. They do nothing. At least they don't do as much as they should do. To properly prepare themselves and get ready for the next assault. So that enemy assault comes in waves. Like ocean, in waves. And one wave comes, and then another wave. And then sometimes it's like a tsunami that you see it coming afar off, and you're wondering, what, what are we going to do now? Hmm? If you hadn't properly prepared for that, ain't no way you're going to run and get away from it. That's right. What you should have been doing was working on your swimming survival skills. Getting you some equipment ready. Our chicken tank, baby. Somebody said, well, you still have better. Well, God be for you. If people don't survive through tsunamis, for the most part, you know, a lot of people don't. But I believe it was the will of God for you to live. You will not die. Even in the midst of a tsunami, a hurricane, or even the blizzards that those people had almost all over the whole country. Because somebody prepared themselves. Well, the power of God, we're going to need a generator. We're going to need some extra blankets, some extra socks, some something to make sure we don't freeze to death. But we have mighty weapons that's been given us by the Lord. And make sure that it's not the enemy that's in you that's bringing defeat in your life. Because we need to crucify our flesh, put to death our own members, and not be our own hindrance or the hindrance of what God wants to do. We must be pliable in the hands of God. We must be willing and obedient, submissive to the Lord. Abandon all resistance. See that? Abandon all resistance. Abandon all resistance. So now let's go. All he's waiting on for folks. Stop fighting. Stop kicking. Stop screaming. And just submit yourself to me. Let me work through you. Let me show the world. Let me manifest in your life what I can do through the instruments that I've given you, the tools that I've already given you, the stuff that I've built on the inside of you. Christ sent us the hope of glory. Yes. Yeah. 
his spirit, his word, praise and worship, and prayer, and intercession. Come on, thanksgiving. Just honor the Lord with our life live this warfare to success. Living godly, living holy, living pure, living clean in the presence of the Lord. Presenting our bodies. Yeah. Come on. Paul says, I beseech you, I encourage you, I motivate you, I push you, I compel you to do this. Yeah. Give yourself over to the Lord. Yeah. And he says, the living sacrifice is going to be holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Because he searches the hearts. He searches the reins. He knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. God knows what's pure and what's right. So, the, so does that mean that sometimes God will reject gifts and things that we offer to him? Come on, somebody. Come on. Hmm? Even though within us we think that we give it and we do it the right, God says, no, no. Hmm? That's why the very revelation said, if you look warm, I will spit you out of my mouth. You ain't ready yet. So that means God has some standards and he has some requirements that sometimes we as a people, we compromise. And God is not compromising. He says, I'm the Lord, I change not. And there's some of the things that we feel like, well, okay, it's all right. You know, God, he don't have mercy, he'll forgive us. And he may do that. But in the, at the same time, God is looking for something. And for those people, he will use them, but he can't use them the fullest of the capacity because they're not ready yet. They're not ready yet. So we must be thoroughly furnished in every good work. So that means some testing, that means some preparation. That means coming out of our comfort zones. Now, we talk about other religions and, you know, people that are not really serving the truth and all, but they have a lot more discipline a lot of times than charismatic, quote, Christian uh, folks do. That's right. Sometimes while we're running around naming the name of Christ and quote scriptures, folk are already busy and doing something and active and seeing success because the law of faithfulness is still working. And then church, church will start to murmur and complaining and getting mad and upset. Talking about, oh, that's just because they serving uh, the devil. Well, could be, could be not. I don't know, but I know, you know, God will honor His word in people's life. It's folk that ain't saved, then that tithe and give, because they understand the principle of the law of reaping and sowing. That's warfare too, even in your giving. That's warfare. Because the enemy knows that that's the nature of God. And a lot of times, you know, in warfare, and yet you have to give your way out of stuff. You have to show your way out of stuff. It goes contrary to a natural thinking called mind. Because most people are whores. But we brought nothing into this world, and certainly we take nothing out. So we must give ourselves to the Lord. Say, give ourselves to the Lord. Give ourselves to the Lord. But we have offensive and defensive weapons in the kingdom. And there's all kind of wars, drug wars, different wars where they had no genocide. You know, you know that's, that's just jacked up, isn't it? But you're willing to kill your own people because they don't agree with you. But you know, the Lord sends us into war and battle in righteousness and holiness and integrity. Yeah. But we have guarantees to win. Mm -hmm. So why are we walking around fearful and afraid yeah. to obey the Lord? Yeah. Murder all around us. You know, people just full of rage and full of anger, even road rage. Mm -hmm. But the real fighting battle is the pride of the souls. Somebody's soul is at stake. Yes. It's not so much about materialistic stuff. 
Somebody's eternity is on the line. Yes. <laughs> so even though Jesus was the Son of Man and the Son of God, he was not here fighting a carnal fight. That was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, because that's all they could see. Well, the son of Joseph, Mary's baby, the commoner's boy. We know you, your mama, your brothers, and your sisters. Mm-hmm. And just like Jesus said, well, if you knew my father, you would know me, for I came from him. Yeah. And yet the enemy used them. In so many ungodly, unholy ways. But you still can get mad with people. Because those things will push you to somewhere. Mm-hmm. It'll push you into fulfilling the will and the purpose and the plan and the destiny of the Lord for your life. It's warfare! Mm-hmm. So don't run. Don't be discouraged. So, matter of fact, you ought to look back and tell some people thank you. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I, I, you know, I said it, it's, it's good that you left me. May not be all the time on you know, the best under the best circumstances, but God already know. Yeah. He already know. Yeah. And people can say, "Well, you this and you this, you that, and you you and the other." But a friend loveth at all times. Uh-huh. Brothers born for the day of adversity. Through the fit, through the fear, through the trials, through the test. That's what faithfulness and loyalty speaks of. Yeah. I'm not necessarily agree with everything that's about you, but even like with the Lord, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Imagine if God left us in the middle of war because we sinned and we missed the mark. That's what happened between Paul and John Mark. John Mark got beside himself, and Paul says, He ain't ready yet. Some people were called problems. They will make you vulnerable to attack. Hmm? They will cause the enemy, you know, to be able to spot your location, to be able to assess where you are. Because they talk too much. When you got a strategy, you can always tell everybody about what God is doing. You can always tell everybody, you know, the vision and the dream and the goal that God's given you. That's right. Sometimes our own mouth in warfare gets us in trouble. Yeah. Makes us vulnerable of attack. Opens us up to the enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why we must be wise as serpents. Somebody say harmless as doves. Take me to June chapter 1, verse 17. Say the power of success of vision. Yeah. Through spiritual warfare. We're fighting beings without bodies. And you gotta fight them in the Holy Ghost. You gotta fight them in the Holy Ghost. You gotta fight them in the Holy Ghost. You gotta fight them through the Spirit of God. You gotta fight them through the Word of God. It's written. So you, have, you have to open up your mouth. The word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Believe that's Hebrews 4 and 12. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the divine son of the soul and spirit as the discerning thoughts and the intentions, the motives of a person's heart. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you understand some of the components and you can't have a weak mind in warfare right. where you easily offended, you easily discouraged. You know, some 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 people get discouraged over any little lady that's talking about I me mean, out here. What? Really? Is, is that what's making you cry? Is that is that the only thing that have you discouraged so you and all? Is that it? Is that all? Somebody that got off in the works of the flesh because they weren't walking in the spirit they had a is the, if somebody else's attitude is the only thing that's got you bent out of shape. Hmm? Change my Is that the only thing? Come on. 
We get so dis easily distracted and lose our focus in the middle of war and battle. So, scripture says, two are better than one, for the one fall, other will lift up his brother. Jesus said about two and two. Tag team duos. Before the WWE ever even got started. Yeah, Paul and Silas in the prison. One prison, and they sing and praises to the Lord, and the prisoners heard them. They had a jailbreak. That's warfare in the midst of. Yeah. Hmm? And that is Peter put in prison. They just killed James with the sword and said, Peter, we're going to kill you too. Uh, and you know the prison doors are locked, and you can't get out there. Tomorrow, you die. Mm. What are you going to do? You see two different instances. Yes, sir. Two, two begin to sing praises to the Lord. And they pray, and the prisoners heard them. One lays down his head on the pillow, goes to sleep while the church is praying for him. Lord, free Peter. Yes, sir. They have killed James, and now they have the bishop of the church. We need for you to bring him out. Maybe if they would have been praying for James, maybe he would have got free. But sometimes, tragedy has the apple for folks to open their eyes. That's right. And say, we refuse to have another casualty because somebody has been lazy and has not been paying attention to the details. Mm -hmm. Not willing to pay the price. That every saint, every believer is valuable to God. Must have been maybe it was this time. Well, let's test the limits. Huh? Let's test the limits when folk are sick. Let's test the limits when folk have AIDS. Let's test the limits when the doctor says that they have an incurable disease in their body. There's, there's nothing else that we can do for them. Let's test the limits when they put folk in middle wars and say they'll be crazy all the night. Let's test the limits when they told their two kids have ADD and DDD and they got middle and psychological problems. We need to go lay hands upon them in the name of Jesus and say, every that demon, there, that devil, there, every oppressive spirit, we come against you, we bind you in the car. In Jesus' name, come out of him. Yes. Come out. Yes. Nuisance. Yes. You spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. Come out. Yes. I bind you in Jesus' name. Yes. Hmm? Come on. Yes. Stand in our authority. Walk in, in our dominion with the Lord. Yes. Saved by grace through faith. Know who you are and who you are in the Lord. Yes. Yes. So you're saved, you're born again, now what? Do you know how to see the manifestation of the promises of God in your life? Because he's already done everything that he's going to do. I'm going to see that the right hand of the Father making intercession for us now. He said, I've already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Yes. He ain't coming now, ain't no kumbaya. He says, you go ye. Mm -hmm. into all the world and preach and teach the gospel to every creature. Come on, somebody. Yes. Oh, man, come on. Oh, Lord. It sounds real good, too. It sounds real good, too. It sounds like it's so just spiritual and so, so of the so of God and oh man the angels and, no, and oh Lord and go on by we know he said his word to heal folk now we understand that right now but no certain things we say to the Lord to do he said well no I've empowered you I've commanded you to do it yeah. and he ain't even moved he just continued to sit there in the sea until somebody wake up and smell the coffee mm -hmm. Come to themselves, come to their senses, or they hear the preaching, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to know that fivefold ministry is to train and equip you to go yes. Yes. and do the work of the ministry. Yes. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hmm? The come out of the Lord, go over there to the hospital room and touch on and lay your hand. <laughs> He told you to lay your hands. Yes. Go and melt them with oil, praying over them in the name of who? In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. That's our faith. That's the obedience to the Word of God. The reason why people don't see the manifestation of what God's promised because they won't do nothing. They won't exercise their faith. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
All right. Let me get to Jude. I got to move now. All right. Jude, uh, uh, 17. Start at verse 17. Take me down to verse number 20. But me love. Yes. Remember ye the words mm -hmm. that were spoken before the apostles. Yes. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. How they that how they that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Mm -hmm. Mockers, scoffers, yes. Who should walk after their own ungodly lost teachers, apostasy, yes. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, carnal, fleshly minded, yes, having out the spirit. Yeah, don't have the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. But you do love. But you, what, what, the understood subject, point, look, point at you, huh? The understood subject, but you, say me, me. say I, I. say us, us, the believers, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. yes. But you do love, you the love, you precious people, mm -hmm. huh? The love, yes. Building up yourself. Building up who? Yourselves. Lifting up, encouraging yourselves. Building up, strengthening yourself. David encouraged, David strengthened himself in the Lord. So now in warfare, listen, you won't have time to run here and there. You don't have time to call your preacher, your pastor, your apostle, nobody else. When you know that it's Christ in you, the hope of the Lord, that you have direct access to God for yourself, well, you better get into the throne room. You better, you better go in the presence of the Lord, being careful for nothing but anything but by prayer and what? By supplication with what? With thanksgiving. That you can pray without ceasing. Come on, that you can go boldly unto the throne of grace. Yeah. And I'll take mercy and find grace to help. The anointing of God that's on the inside of you, grace to help. The anointing of the Lord, the anointing of the Spirit of God, that you can find grace to help in the time of need. God's favor, God's enablement, God's empowerment on your life, in your life, working through you. The awesome working of God in your life, in your midst. Yes. Building yourself up on your most, what? Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Right there. Your peak faith. <laughs> to a confidence, you know, like a cup running over the brim. Come on, come on. You have the blood bought right. You have the stuff on the inside of you to do this. No matter how severe your circumstance, how the enemy blindsides you, how he sucker fuck you, whatever it is, you have the ability to get up again. Well, come on. You have the ability to rise to whatever that occasion is, that no matter how intense the battle is, you can stand up to whoever the enemy is. Because it's the deity of God that's living on the inside of you, that there's nothing that can defeat him. And if he's in you, there's nothing that should be able to defeat you because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are overcomers. We are winners. We are the ones that go through the storm and the tent and the rain and the hell and the high water and the enemy coming up against us like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The enemy can only do so much. He can only come so far. The God says that's enough. And we stand up and say, oh, that's enough. The last is wrong to say you will proceed no further. Yes. Yes, 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 sir. But when we just pet it, yes, just pet the sickness. And they say, well, within a couple of uh, seven, eight days or whatever, by taking all this medication and putting this pharmacia, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, and this witchcraft and sorcery, that's really what it is, in, on the inside of your body is really not designed to heal you. Um, uh, you know, uh, hopefully by now, by, by this time, uh, you should be here and you should be there. Hmm? I just simply take the word of God for face value. When I feel symptoms, don't mean that I don't take certain stuff. You know, I take vitamin B12 and, you know, say I have to use a little common sense. But at the, at the onslaught of symptoms, I say, well, it's a germ. It's a bacteria. Something is trying to violate me. Mm -hmm. 
Something is trying to enter me that's not supposed to be here. Uh huh. So your mind and your body starts to react to it. Drink some sour milk and see what happens in five minutes or so. See how if your stomach starts to bubbling. Mm-hmm. Or eat some bad food. Mm-hmm. And shortly thereafter, your system says something got to come out. Because yeah. yeah. it's not supposed to be in it. I'm just giving you some practical stuff that, that, that you can apply the word of God in your life. I could not every germ, every bacteria. Yes. Yeah. That's trying to attack my body right now in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Then I pray, Lord, help me and show me, direct me by your spirit what I need to be putting in my body mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. What do I need to be doing different? Forgive me of anything that I've done contrary. That's repentance. Thank you. That I've done contrary to your will or contrary to your word. And if this is the enemy, that's trying to work some foolishness in my life. I tighten every yeah. spirit. I cancel every assignment of hell that's against me right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come on. Yeah. My family and wife, they'll tell you they've been sick in the house and I'm, and, and I'm, I'm pleading the blood, pleading the blood, spreading life all said the devil is alive. But in the same bed, kissing and hugging and saying, hey, I rebuke this in Jesus' name off you. Come in. Yeah. Just say it. Now, I'm not saying I do that on every occasion. See, so some folks, again, again, you have to use wisdom that be led by the Spirit of God. You're the Son of God. So there's an occasion I say, well, you're just hard-headed. You're just hard-headed. Some people are just hard-headed. Right? You just yeah. hard head. But if you if you have the tools, but you just do the same thing. You just stand in faith. That's right. And a couple of days later, if that long. It's there. Sometimes those nagging spirits, you know, they'll just kind of just hang around and play with your mind. But I've already spoke spoke with the word of the Lord. Yeah. So I'm not even focusing on the symptoms anymore. I'm focusing on the symptoms anymore. Now, I've been in a situation where it got so bad. Well, I'm not, again, you know, I'm going to the doctor and say, man, what's really going on here? Diagnostic, man. Diagnostic, huh? Now i got a plan of action. I know exactly what I need to be dealing with. They write the ID, the description, and they ain't going to get this feel, but I'm, this is what I'm going to do right here. This is what I'm going to do right here. But this, this is all you said is my issue. And it's going to warrant me taking this. Because the Spirit of God gives you wisdom. But building yourself up on your most holy, your peak faith. Right? God wants you to have overflow in your spirit. He wants you to have more than enough. Because when we go out half cock, we don't know what we're going to face. So like you can't you can't be going no officer go out you know with a magazine half full of bullets on the beat. He says I got one full. And I got two or three more, or whatever it is, I got the shotgun back here if you get too stupid. He makes sure he has enough. And if then, well, I got my radio in some backup. Some backup. But you can't take certain stuff laying down. But praying in the Spirit, building yourself on your what? Your most holy faith, what? Praying in what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Praying in your heavenly language. Praying in tongues. Come on, it's a gift that comes through the Holy Ghost. You got to work that thing. Tell somebody to work it, work it, work it, work it. And they say, well, that ain't all for me. And I'm not saying you got to go over and do it all in public, but it's something that comes. It's a package deal. Yes. And every believer has the ability to they do or not because the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of them. The praying in other tongues, the praying of the languages in the Holy Ghost. It's in there. Yes. Mm. That's right. Given by God is there. And some people, they think that's the devil. That's demons. They're praying in them, 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 them tongues again. Yeah. 